tides and waves. The ocean is not one continuous water body. Great land masses and continents divide the world ocean into a number of ocean basins, largely cut off from one another. When we carry a vessel full of water, the center remains steady, but it tends to slope up and down round the side. This roughly happens in each of the oceans. In the oceans, the water is comparatively steady and rises or falls only a few millimeters or half a meter. But on the margins of the oceans and especially where there is a shallow continental shelf around the continents, the effect of the tide is much greater. When a tidal wave enters an estuary, which is shallow and narrow, the wave increases in height. In the funnel-shaped estuaries, the wave breaks and forms a wall of foaming water called a bore, which surges forward at several kilometers per hour. This usually happens when the tidal wave meets a river. Strong bows can be seen on the Hooghly River in Kolkata. Bows also occur on the Sien Tang Kiang, North China, and the Amazon River. The tides are very important in case of estuaries and harbors. The increased depth of water at high tide enables larger ships to enter the harbor. Larger steamers often wait for the tide to carry them up or down an estuary. Many ships use the retreating waters of the low tide to leave the others. Tides constantly sweep the coasts, carrying away silt brought down by rivers. This helps in keeping the river channels and many harbors free from sediment. During the 20th century, engineers developed ways to use the rise and fall of tides to generate electricity. Reversible turbines in the dam allow electricity to be generated when powerful tides come in and go out. The world's first tidal power plant was built in France in the mid-1960s. In cold countries, tides prevent ports from becoming ice-bound in winter by bringing in salt water and keeping the sea in constant motion. During a high tide, low-lying areas along sea coasts get flooded and this trapped water can be used for manufacturing salt. Strong tidal currents help rivers in building their flood plains. Fishermen depend on the regular rhythm of high and low tide for their livelihood. They sail out into the sea and return with the tide. Seawater contains a variety of salts and minerals which are brought down by the rivers and hence, seawater is usually salty or saline. Salinity means the degree of saltiness of the oceans and the seas. It is expressed as the number of parts of salt dissolved in a thousand parts of seawater. The average salt content is 35 grams per kilogram of seawater which is expressed as 35 per thousand. The salinity of the sea depends on two main factors, which are the rate of evaporation and the amount of fresh water added by rivers and rainfall.
the Dead Sea has the maximum salinity of 240 per thousand. This is so because it lies in the tropics which is hot and hence the rate of evaporation is high. At the same time, this is also a region of very scanty rainfall. The Arctic Ocean has the lowest salinity of around 20 per thousand. This is because of the slow rate of evaporation and the several streams and rivers that add fresh water to it. Some salt water bodies known as seas are lakes in reality. All salt river lakes are closed. For example, in case of the Caspian Sea, many rivers flow into it, but no river flows out of it. The temperature of the ocean water in the tropical zone is between 23 degrees Celsius and 27 degrees Celsius and it can be as warm as 30 degrees Celsius. The temperature goes on decreasing gradually towards the poles where it is about 2.2 degrees Celsius and can be as low as minus 2 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the ocean water varies only in the upper surface. The water is colder with the increasing depth and thus the water is very cold at a greater depth.